most of the people in the film, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I first read a Rolling Stone article, uh, which uh, Tim was, was featured in, and I just, there's a world I knew nothing about. I, I didn't know much about a border. I didn't know much about uh, vigilantism. I didn't know, you know, anything about this. And what, the minute I read it, I just knew this could be an amazing film. I spent about four or five months uh, with Tim and his guys, and then my father actually sent me an article in the Wall Street Journal about the auto defenses in uh, Mitchell Khan. And again, the minute I read that, I was like, wow, this could be this amazing sort of parallel story of, of sort of citizen groups on both sides of the border fighting the same common enemy. And um, about three weeks later, I was down there filming, and my mom wasn't too happy with my father. So. <laughs> <laughs> any, any other questions? Right here. Aren't you af afraid of repercussions from these people? Am I afraid of uh, repercussions from these people? Wh which people? Drug <laughs> cartels. Uh, from the drug cartels. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think um, obviously this is a, you know a d dangerous film to make. I think one of the struggles of making this film was, was obviously access. Access to me is everything, and. Um, I think one of the things that allowed us to get what we got, especially in Mexico, was time. We spent a lot of time down there. We spent about two weeks out of every month, one or two weeks out of every month down there. And um, you know, very early on, the minute we stepped foot in Mexico, we told them, you know, we're here to, to capture the truth, this this historic sort of uprising in Mexico, and you know, we weren't taking sides, and we sort of become acquainted with everyone, and that allowed us to get access to, you know, as you saw, at all different sides. And I think, you know, like anyone who takes part in a documentary, I think they want the truth to be told, and I think they want their, their voice to be um, written in the history books. And so I think, um, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not too worried about the cartels as much as I am about the Mexican government, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, right here. Are you going to show, I mean, I guess you'd like to show the film in Mexico, but will there be challenges involved in that? Do you think that, have you shown it already there? The question was, uh, am I nervous about showing in Mexico? Or have you shown it already? Or have we shown it in Mexico and um, the, challenges, the challenges of doing that? We have not really, we have not shown the film in Mexico. Um, we plan to. Um, it's, it's, you know, I think it will shake a lot of things up. Mexico, and um, we are excited to be able to hopefully have the opportunity to do that. Um, obviously, there um, we actually have to go through their version of the Department of Homeland Security to get the permission to show film there. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, we get just that permission. Um, way in the back, next. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What does our government do about the vigilantes on this side of the border? What does our government do about vigilantes on our side of the border? State or uh, national? State or national? State government, state law enforcement or the border patrol. Sure. Uh, they, they are not doing anything uh, illegal. They um, are, you know, often work in, in concert with, with the border patrol, as you saw in the scene, uh, when they get rounded up uh, those guys. Uh, they, they worked with Border Patrol, um, so, you know, as of right now, they're, you know, not, there's nothing happening, so. Uh, Tim has a question. To let you know, uh, we have uh, drawn up a long list of uh, rules of engagement, standard operating procedures. We have taken them to multiple agencies that... Uh, we have uh, written up a long list of rules of engagement of how uh, we do things down there and standard operating procedures. We have taken all of our paperwork to multiple agencies that work down there. Who uh, finances you? We do, uh, myself. I've cashed out my pension and I've thrown everything I've had this 
because my thought is, if we don't do something now, there might not be anything to do tomorrow because it'll be too late. And my hope thing of working with Matthew was to get people to see what's really happening because what you're seeing on television is not what's happening. It's I've been down there for five years and every year it's getting worse. Uh, in the past two weeks we've had multiple shootings on the border. Uh, it's only a matter of time before it turns into what's happening down there in Mexico. Uh, we go by all state laws. Uh, we go by all federal laws. We're not breaking any laws. It's all public land. We operate in national forests and national wildlife reserves. Uh, down there you should be able to take your family out to a national forest and go camping. You can't. You can't go watch the butterflies that come in every year down there. It's too dangerous. It's This, when I'm down there, is a different reality. When you go down there, and anybody who wants to, you're more than welcome to come down. <laughs> the nickel tour, if you're still in doubt. <laughs> uh, question right here in the hat. Um, Mexico being one of the most dangerous places for interviewers and or uh, for uh, reporters and movie makers, did you ever fear for your own safety while you were down there? Um, the question was, did I ever fear for my own safety? Um, yeah, of course. Um, I'm, I'm not a not a war journalist. I've never been in these situations before, um, and. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's plenty of times when I fear for my safety, I think. Um, but, you know, there's, there's journalists all across the world who are in far more dangerous places. Um, I think, you know, there's 240 journalists that have been killed this year alone. Um, so, you know, what we were doing was no different than what thousands of other people are doing all across the world. So, um, yeah. Uh, Matt, how how and at what point did you get the access to the cartel guys that booked in the film? Um, so the, how, how did we get access to the cartel guys that booked in the film? The cash cow of the Nice Templar cartel is meth. 90% of meth consumed in the U.S. comes from Mexico, most of it from Michoacan, most of it from the Nice Templar. And so the minute we stepped, down, stepped foot in Mexico, I, my goal was to get in uh, into a meth lab, in with the cartel. And every shoot we went down there, we tried to find somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody to get into the um, into the labs. And it was only on our, I think our second to last shoot um, over the summer that we got a call from somebody who I will not say, but who's in the film, um, who uh, said, be in this town square at 6 p.m. and we will drive you in. We drove in a truck to a field. Another truck came, led us to somewhere else. Another truck came and led us into the math lab. And um, I knew when I was shooting that uh, scene, I knew I wanted to start the film with it, and I knew I wanted to end the film with it. Why in the world did they let you do it? Why in the world did they let me do it? Why is that, you know, I think, <laughs> I think you can ask that question for a lot of documentary characters. Um, the, the rules that we had from, from the boss who gave us permission to go in there were, um, distort their voices and cover their faces. And when we first walked in there, the, the head chef in the beginning um, of, the, of the film just said, "Hey, come on in. Let's let's start. Let's start filming. Let's go. You know, I want to show you. I want to show you how we do things down here." And I said, "Well, we need to cover your face, right?" And he's like, "Well, who cares?" And I said, "I think we should cover your face." Um, so um, they, you know, they they believe that they are farmers. They're cultivating a crop. That crop just happens to be a drug, and that drug just happens to flow northwards and ruin a lot of people's lives. So, but for them, you know, as he says in the beginning of the film, this is, this is, what else are we going to do down here? We don't have the opportunity to travel around the world like you. Yeah. Sorry. Um, mid, midway up. Did you uh, reach out to the Mexican government and try to get 
uh, any access there or get anyone to speak to the subject? Did we reach out to anyone in the Mexican government to talk about the subject? Uh, my last film was called Escape Fire. It was a film on, on healthcare in the U.S. And you know, I'm very proud of that film. Um, but it, you know, that film was a, was a policy film, was a cause film, and I really wanted to sort of break out of that mold and make a film um, that was more of who I am and where I want to go artistically. And part of that is to not have talking heads, to not have experts. Um, so I never even considered talking to the Mexican government, um, for better or for worse. So, um, right here on the aisle. Yeah, I was interested in the scene where the doctor is shown ordering the killing of someone who was stopped at a roadblock. To put him in the ground, and for two reasons. One, that he lets you film that. And secondly, that particularly now that the doctor's in prison in Mexico, um, what what your concerns might have been in putting that into the film? Um, that is something that we have uh, thought about endlessly. Um, obviously, it's a very intimate moment. Um, the truth is, we don't know exactly what happened after that. You know, the guy was taken away. Um, we're not sure exactly what happened to him. And you know, my as I told everyone, as I told him, as I told the doctor, as I told everyone in that film, with, my job is to be down here as a witness to what's happening. My job is to find out what the truth is and to tell the truth. And so every day when we wake up in the morning, I'm putting a mic on you. And when I go to bed, I'm taking the mic off of you. And we film, you know, hundreds of, hundreds of hours of footage with him. Um, so um, we felt like it was important Thing to show, um, it happened, and I felt the duty that it was you know, important to show both the good and the bad. So, right here, with the yeah. from me. you know, uh, thank you for for putting all of this in our lap. You haven't. There's no answers in your film, and that's really a powerful storytelling documentary. For me, I saw Che and the Doctor and seeing a cleaned up vet trying to be responsible to his country. Um, these are powerful personal images. And I, I just wonder how you walk away now. What are you thinking about what will happen to the doctor? What will happen to the good vets who get demonized in, in, by the policymakers? And I'm talking about the good vets. I'm not talking about the survivalists. I'm not talking about the racists. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about the man who's sitting behind me. Um, I, I think the question is, uh, am I concerned about what's going to happen to to both Naylor mm -hmm. and, and uh, um, El Doctor? Uh, yeah, you know, anytime. I think there's a lot. There's many people in the film that I'm concerned. I'm concerned about. Um, a lot of things keep me up at night. <laughs> um, and the doctor could be in jail for, he could be out of jail tomorrow, he could be in jail for the rest of, the, of his life. You know, there's no, he hasn't, there's been no trial, we have no sense of what exactly what's going to happen to him. We've tried to s get him to speak to him. Um, it is a different world down there. And um, so we shall see. And I think Tim, He's been threatened by the cartels. He's received threats. Uh, I think he knows that those threats would probably increase once this film gets out to the general public. Mm -hmm. And I think he accepts that uh, risk. So, um, but yeah, I, you know, it's something that obviously concerns all of us who are making the film and behind the film. Thank you. One more very good question. <laughs> uh, right here in the front. Did anything surprise me um, during the filming process? I, I think what surprised me is that hopefully what surprised you in the film. Um, especially in Mexico, I went down there thinking I was telling the story of, of good versus evil, of guys in white shirts um, going against guys with black hats. And slowly, the more and more time I spent down there, uh, the more and more I realized where are these trucks coming from? Where are these guns coming from? Um, and 
I almost became obsessed to try to figure out what exactly was going on, how, how this movement was working, and um, it ended up in this place that I could never have imagined. Um, after the doctor got in the accident, obviously things started to derabble even more, and um, again, I think that's the, to my, in my opinion, the beauty of documentary film is, is sort of um, a mentor of mine in the film world once told me, you know, if you weren't, if you end up with a story you started with, you weren't listening along the way, and um, that's something that I, I held true to my heart every time. You know, the, the story was constantly shifting, and it was our, our job to sort of make sure we we're there for the right moments and and to capture the ever-evolving story. Um, thank you guys so much for being here. It's really